challenging and hard and heavy. And we want to make sure that everybody that that everybody that's joining us at camp feels like they've been adequately prepared for that part and feels confident in the role that they'll be filling. And we'll be doing a lot more talking about children's grief and how to talk to kids and how to communicate um, and pull out stories that you, some of the stories like that that you've heard, like favorite memories and that kind of stuff this afternoon we're all together because that's something we, we know our returning volunteers always like a refresher on. But camps is one of my favorite times of the year. It, it's sad, for sure, and there's no way that you could describe it as not having parts that are sad. But it's magical, and kids don't want to leave. They want to live at Camp Barron. <laughs> One little girl that's, that it's better than a four-star hotel. <laughs> um, and I know this kid, so that was a really that was a good feedback. Um, so the kids that come to Camp Barron are coming from all different backgrounds. We don't have um, requirements around the time since the death, the type of death. Um, so there will be some really hard stories that you might hear. Um, so that it could be a sudden or violent death, such as homicide or suicide. It could be a, a car accident or a heart attack or an illness where it was expected. Um, we are a share as you want um, and always have the opportunity to pass camp. So we will never force some kids to share more than they want to. We don't give you as volunteers a lot of private information about the campers. We give them the ownership of their own story to share it with you when when they want to or with the group as they choose to. Um, but that's not to say that we don't leave you with the information that you would need to fill that goal of making it a safe and, and helpful camp for them. Um, part of the screening that Charlotte's been doing for the last month are around how do you, how, you know, how does the camper do in a group? Um, do they have times where they respond to extreme, like to heavy emotions with violence or running away? Um, we've done our best to screen for kids that don't run because of the bears. <laughs> I just can't, can't take that risk. Um, that doesn't mean that that's not going to present a camp. Um, we, we know that kids' grief um, is a bit different than adults in the sense that they're able to be in it in one moment and out of it the next. Um, so they and they transition quite nicely and we'll be setting up the camp programming to help them transition from the kind of grief activities you saw to the funner activities. Um, we always end the day on a higher note to try and you know, not have kids having a hard time sleeping or nightmares. Um, we're gonna talk a lot this afternoon about how to help with kids that um, are having a hard time being away from home. That's a really big thing for a bereaved family because a lot of young kids um, move into the family bed after a death and probably, and many of them will not have slept alone for months, years. Um, some bereaved, you know, a parent who's had a child or a spouse die can have a really, really hard time letting another one of their family members out of their sight. So there, a lot of our job as volunteers is oozing confidence that your child is going to be taken care of as well as, well, you know, that you can trust us. And, and just to, to share that confidence with them that I know it's going to be okay and the campers going to have a good weekend. Um, we don't have campers call home. We have an emergency number for the caregivers um, that we do everything we can to, to deal with issues at camp. It also is a break for parents. So a lot of the caregivers have not had an opportunity to be with other kids for a long time. And so we we encourage them to try and plan something special and take advantage of that time. Some of them have told me they're just going to sit in the bed and watch Netflix. <laughs> I never get to do that. So I was like, fair enough. Um, so that's a, that's a big part. So we're supporting campers, but we're also supporting caregivers because you're going to be meeting them you're going to be introduced to the caregivers of the kids in your group at Meet the Camper, and then you're going to be, um, they're going to be physically giving their custody of their kids to, to you um, on the morning of camp. So they'll be looking to you, they'll want
want to know you. And just like with campers, you're welcome to share, you know, as much or as little about your own story as we'd like to. All we want is for them to, to think that you're good people that are going to take care of your kids. And we're confident of that, otherwise you wouldn't be here. And I think that's a really important thing for you guys to know too, is we don't, um, we don't just allow anybody to come to Camp Erin. We're really thoughtful about volunteers. Um, you know, Rebecca, you were interviewed and you know, we asked questions that we hoped would give us a good picture of who you are and and what you would be like with the kids. Um, I want you to know that whether or not you were placed as a buddy or an activity does not reflect on how well we thought you would engage with kids. <laughs> it's all the numbers. And we sh I'll talk a bit more about that this afternoon, but this year is going to be crazy. We usually take 70 kids. The Moyer Foundation offered us an uh, opportunity to apply for extra spots, and <laughs> we had a waiting list, and I couldn't not, so we're taking 94 kids this year. It's, there's not going to be an empty bed. There's going to be three buses. It's going to be a really busy weekend. And the other thing, and again, we'll talk more about this afternoon, the national, the CBC National has, um, is doing a story in Camp Aaron this year. So they'll also be there over the weekend of the day. So we'll talk a bit more about what that means for you guys um, as representatives and also your comfort with being on national TV. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> um, I do want to talk about funding. Uh, we have been so blessed to have a, a really long-standing relationship with Jake Hare. Um, it's nice because it's the baseball team again, and um, they have a foundation, and this is our sixth year of them granting us funds to make Camp Air happen. Um, they cover most of camp, and that allows us to not be chasing funds to pay the bills, but just to focus on making camp amazing. So we're very grateful, and we also have um, a company called Richter, and their staff have funds coming out of their paycheck each month, and they do big sales, and they're like these, I think we do investment and insurance, and so it's, it's quite fun to present to them and see them all serious, and then by the end they're usually crying. It's, it's, it's nice to see that change. You know what I mean? I don't want to see people cry. Um, crying, you're allowed to cry. So if you haven't had any training or involvement with um, working in a situation where the content is heavy, we want to model for kids. Right? We want, if we're holding our emotions back when they tell us something that's, that's very hard and very sad, the message to them is, oh, either you weren't impacted and you don't think that that was really sad, or maybe, or they might take away, you don't cry, um, or when you're sharing something about your own story. So we don't ask you to hold back emotion, but if you, and this has happened, and so if it does happen to you, I don't want you to feel like you failed or that you need to pull it together. If you if you get triggered, if you're feeling overwhelmed, and if you feel like you're going to lose control, and I think the there's a difference between crying, we've all been there. There's crying and then there's breaking down. So if you're feeling like you're close to, needing a, to getting to a place where you wouldn't be able to care for your campers and they'd be caring for you, then that's when you pull out and you come and find one of the counselors or one of the floaters. And we, we find a safe place for you. We support you through that. And we feel worried about the campers, so we just can't be like the rest of the camp. So that's really important. Um, and I think it, it'll be nice to hear from the past campers how they handled this, but there is um, sort of the best way to after camp. Um, sometimes volunteers take that when it all hits them. So they a lot of really hard week following camp, um, crashing, reliving some of the stories of the week of camp. We would like to beg to leave that they they can make sure everybody's okay. It's normal to, to think about your campers and to think about your stories. Um, but if you've had stories spiking that you can't get out of your head and it's you know week to week bigger than than we can see. Um, because there are some some really heartbreaking spots. I mean they're all sad stories that you can't believe actually happened to your kids, the one you kids. Um, so the, the 
a lot of the trained volunteers say that they have learned to book Monday off to a rest because it's nonstop. Um, and I wanted to just finish this and I'll get to have a lot more energy than we do. Um, I'll take some of help. Um, but just also the emotional self care, um, having some space to process because you don't really have a lot of time to your your goal the weekend is to make sure you're happy with the rest of the week and look forward. And so there's not a ton of space for you to be processing stuff. Um, so everyone should have got the book The New Dying. You're required to read that if you haven't read it already online. Um, and also we give it out because the more people that have good information about how to support kids and talk to kids about death and dying um, out in the community, the better. So remember that you have that book and someone can Katie is at camp for grieving kids. My friends, um, you know, my friends have kids and dad has died. And uh, you, you know the information and you can help them do that. So then it also talks about communication. It talks about developmental um, tasks that kids are working on and how grief can affect that and, and how we can support kids around that kind of stuff. How to talk, what kind of language. We'll, we'll do the overview this afternoon, but the book um, is is important to understand because we can't go into that detail in, in one day. And we, we do our best to make it one big and not have you guys work the whole week. So our emergency procedure is the next page. Um, and the, the book through the manual everyone was, who has read today or can see. So this is, has anyone been to each before? <laughs> so it is 40 acres, and it's, it's a really large site, but we by no means use the 40 acres. Um, we're going to use more of it this year than we ever have in the past. So you'll get a copy of the map um, at Leave the Cancer or Camp Calgary the morning of camp. Basically, we live in this small area. Um, the dining hall is our house, the med shed here is where you will find the camp doctor, Dr. Chris Newman, um, unless she's dealing with an emergency or um, is giving you medication. Dr. Hal Berman will be the, the co-camp um, doctor. He'll be here this afternoon. Um, and Hal cannot make sick still, so he'll be everywhere playing and um, he'll be the doctor on the go. Call it not. Um, so, and the flagpole field, there is an actual flagpole in the middle of the field, and that's our emergency meeting spot. When you hear the horn, that means they're an emergency, that could be a lost camper, that could be a fire, that could be a bear. You need to get the kids you're responsible for um, to that flagpole, and all of the staff um, and doctors will meet at the med shed to figure out what's going on and make the plan and come report to you about the next steps. That's the only thing you need to remember and you'll say this a million times is get to the flagpole. Um, the high risk areas for camp are pretty self-explanatory. There is a highway not far off. This um, over here is the barn. We do spend a lot of time in the barn um, for different events. So it is off the highway, so that's a high risk area. The waterfront, of course, when you're there you will need to be a really close eye on your kids. Um, it's well staffed with uh, lifeguards. Um, there's canoeing and kayaking. Um, you walk along the waterfront to get to that station. The swimming dock is it's very specific about where you can swim. I had a doctor in that kept swimming back and forth. And I was like, how can we tell the kids to stay in there if you're going to swim all over the place? <laughs> well, um, so, there's a, a swimming area that the kids can touch for the younger kids or whoever is, does not have the skills. And then a deeper end with the, uh, that, um, the older kids with older, um, the older groups will be up in the high risk area, which is Peter Stavitz course is up here. So that's a bit of a hike. Um, and then Colleen will also be taking the teenagers on a hike up to the yurt. The living quarters are Peter House with his older girls, my Maple Boys, Balsam 
Is, uh, is tricky. It's a little bit something. There are some very clear, like black and white. Uh, there definitely are some great points to confidentiality. Um, 
But the main one is, is that um, we're, when we're at camp, we meet these kids, uh, we're meeting them because of the situation that they've had. Uh, and that's information that we've been given, and, and you'll be given information um, potentially by them or by the medical team uh, and the counselors about what their history is, and that's privileged information. And that's information that, that stays uh, within our circle and within the camp there in circle. Um, so there are a couple things wrong with that. One, um, there are no photos. We're not going to be taking any photos. Uh, there's going to be a photographer, so uh, keep your cameras at home. Um, they shouldn't be on your cell phone. Uh, same thing. We're, we're not that showing that? things. Yeah, oh, cell phones. <laughs> no <laughs> selfie sticks. <laughs> we have no selfie sticks. My cousin and then, but obviously, like we want you to share that you you came and volunteered. Like, if your friends or your family are like, "Oh, what do you do this weekend?" You don't have to be like, "Oh, nothing. I just want to play." <laughs> like that. No, you can. I volunteered at camp. I volunteered at Camp Aaron. Oh, what's Camp Aaron? Oh, Camp Aaron is a bereavement camp. It's a grief camp. Uh, that's okay. You can say things like that, um, and you can show. Uh, you won't have pictures. Why don't we go on the common? Uh, Camp Aaron, uh, like Facebook group, there is where you can see photos of what the camp is and learn more about it. Um, so we, we shouldn't well, be talking there. You can like the page. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a plug in that will come in a couple of times. We've been allowed to have social media, so Rebecca's been working. Um, that being said, uh, sorry, I'll get to you in one second. Um, that being said, if somebody, um, if one of your campers shares something with you that you're like, oh, I don't know what to do with this information, um, please come tell us. Uh, actually, the counselors more than me. Uh, they'll know what to do with that information. Um, so please, yes, we can share information amongst uh, this family and this community, uh, but that's where the information goes. And uh, something I always used to tell other volunteers I worked with who when we were allowed to take photos and um, and sort of share stories. And in the back of my mind, I always ask myself, who am I sharing this story for? Am I sharing this story for me, or am I sharing this story for the child? And if I'm sharing a story for the, for the child, then that story should be shared with a counselor, with a MAXMB staff, with the medical team. Uh, if I'm sharing a story for me, I'm going to keep that story for myself. That's sort of where I see the difference. Um, but confidentiality is tricky. Do you have questions? I just want to add one thing, right? Are you, is that for reporting? Are you going to talk more about reporting? Uh, we're going to talk more about reporting. Okay. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> no, no So something that we have learned over the years is it is important for you to be able to, to talk to your people about so that you can help you process and, and digest it. So you can like you can go home and talk to your partner or family member about stories you've heard, but you don't use identified information, you don't you can change the name, you can change the gender, you can change things and that's if they because a, a lot of these deaths you might people might know about from a couple key identified factors if they were on the news. Um, it's amazing how many times someone says, oh, I knew that family, right? And that's, that's not respectful. But if you're using it to help process and to debrief and unwind for yourself, that's okay. And we want that message to go to kids too. So we had kids going home and saying, I can't talk about it. And so we really are having to teach the kids that there's people you can talk to about it and this is how you can talk about it. So that'll be, we'll talk about that with the campers. We'll come and meet individually with your groups on Friday night and go over that. And you guys will be back, you'll be repeating that message of helping them understand over the weekend how it's okay to talk about other stories. And also, if you want to talk about, about the specific camper, like again, uh, like Heather said, if one story is resonating with you after camp, please, like, that's why the counselors are here. Um, you know, when you go home, it's not see ya, like, we'll see you later, you're all on your own, uh, you're, you're not on your own. Um, so please let any of them know. Uh, if you do want to talk about a specific story and, and you need just a little bit of help, that's okay too. Yeah. I was going to ask about the news situation. CBC is going to be there. Do I need to sign a release so I can be in? Uh, yes. Like, I think I'm like, so every I'm year, regardless, we, we have a media release because pictures are released to donors and right. like Moyer Foundation and Joyce Care requires pictures. Um, so you'll, everybody, every camp, every volunteer, every staff has to sign a release. If you're not comfortable, then that's a conversation we have, and then your your pictures distributed, and they can. I mean, the national this is the national. They can do face recognition and blur faces and that kind of stuff. So it's not a problem. We just need to identify. It. But there will be consent, and they will be focusing on one family that's already started to work with them. So they're doing some pre-interviewing with with a family, and they'll be focusing on those siblings. So and we'll, so that group will be a lot more in the piece. So we'll talk more details with the group. 
because the cameras will feel, they'll feel more watched. But they're also going to be, I mean, they're pros and they're going to be, we're told that we'll bear the noise they did. We're thinking about it a lot, and we're negotiating it a lot with the National Board to do it. And, and I will be watching them closely the whole day. But if you have any concerns or you're noticing the camper feels uncomfortable, and we'll talk more of the big of this because this is new. We've never had a, uh, a media come to camp. I know our, our acting skills are real good. Um, <laughs> the policy is around sexual harassment, um, abuse, diversity, um, just sort of it's recognizing everybody's space and um, being in a safe environment. And, and this goes in, um, in a lot of different ways. Uh, when we talk about harassment, it's volunteer and volunteer, volunteer and staff, um, camper volunteer, camper, camper. Uh, so it can be extended. Uh, that being said, we, so many people meet uh, people at camp, and, and that's okay. Like, I know so many, um, so many of my friends met their, their husbands, their wives, their partners at camp. Um, so don't think, oh gosh, I can't meet people. Like, that's, you know, some people come to camp to meet people, and that's okay. Uh, exchange numbers and do it after camp. Hang out after camp. We are here uh, for the campers uh, and to provide that space for the campers. So, um, it's not to be controlling. Like, we don't want to give that message. It's that your energy should be going to the campers. And yeah, and you know, and there's the reunion. So if you didn't get the nerve up to get a number at the end of camp, you'll see them again at the reunion. <laughs> but we will not. We will not give up private information and requests after. It's up to you to share. And then this also sort of goes a little bit further. This is where the stretch came in, um, where camp is a really safe space for people. And it's amazing. They are outside the city. There is no cell phones, no TVs. Uh, they're removed from their community, uh, which may be amazing. or may be very, very secure for the next couple of years and beyond. Um, we have a wonderful new board uh, that are very, very committed and very excited. The news that we're looking at it keeps changing, as the uh, movie often does. We're looking at moving uh, the end of November now. And the place that we're looking at is 790 Bay, which is actually a building bequest to Women's, Women's College Hospital. So we'll start here. Yeah. It, it, it's going to be, it's where the foundation and a number of the other programs are. They're all moving out to the brand new Women's College Hospital. We're looking forward to a, um, a rich and vibrant relationship with Women's College Hospital. They're excited, we're excited. So I think all we can say right now is it's great news. We've got wrinkles, as you always do, but they're really, really minor compared to where we were a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. So it's exciting time, it's wonderful time. And we're gonna have a camp next year and the year next year and the next year after. And we're even looking at if I can keep have it a little bit controlled, because um, she'd like to have five camps. We're looking at, can we do different types of things, different types of programs, different types of camp? Can we have a youth camp, uh, which we would love to have? Can we have parallel camp, where we have families and kids actually joining in a separate area and having a separate experience? So lots of wonderful ideas. But most of all, I want to thank you. It's a beautiful day out of here, outside there. You've all left and come inside this building on one of our best summer days so far. You know, it feels like summer out there. So thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. Uh, we could never do any of this without you. You are the core. You are our support. And it's going to be a wonderful camp. And I'm sure Heather told you, it's a huge camp. Yeah. We just and it's going to be excited. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to work. Okay. Great. Great to see a lot of faces. I know. I've seen a lot of people returning. Some new faces, some people I used to work with. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Uh, talk about how sad we are. <laughs> there you go. So it's just great to see everybody and looking forward to spending this afternoon and then a number of other occasions together. So we're going to play a game, Sadie Big Cell Phones.